Well, Unreal Engine 4.18 has a large amount of large changes. There's also a few smaller changes that I thought would be worth noting. So we're going to go ahead and quickly cover those. One of them is our new default level now actually has additional items in it. So if we go to new level, click on default, and then we compare this to 4.17, new level, you'll notice, hopefully, we have two new items in here, a skylight and a sphere reflection capture. You also may notice we have a darker scene and a lighter scene, and that's because our skylight is, of course, giving us extra light. 4.18 adds these two new features, these two new items, into our new default levels. So if something looks a little weird, this may be why. You might want to consider working with them because the skylight has gone through a lot of changes in 4.18 and is greatly improved. Another smaller one, let's go ahead and grab something like our skylight here. We'll scroll all the way to the top. Yeah, let's do, we'll do the player start. There we go. We'll grab 4.17's player start. And we'll look at this. The detail panel now has extra spacing between each category. If you look, you'll notice at the end of transform, it butts up with the end of beginning of object and then render and such. You have barely any room between each category. 4.18, with the exception of transform, which I haven't quite figured out why, all the other categories, unless they have an advanced option, have a little bit of buffer room. So you can see buffer room, buffer room, buffer room. Advanced items actually have the advanced arrow as the buffer. So you can see that here now. And you can see it's just a small little change but it's nice because it makes things a little bit clearer and cleaner against each other. Arrays. Arrays may now be reordered inside of the engine. So if we pull up our array here and we look at it, we now have options on the side to drag and drop. So for example, if I accidentally ordered these in the wrong order, I could just drag and drop and reorder them to any order I want. It's nice and handy. You no longer have to insert, duplicate, delete, and try to rearrange things. It just simply works by dragging and dropping the values inside your array. The other nice advantage of this, though, is the editor itself supports that natively. So any of the editor windows that are using arrays support drag and drop as well. As you can see here, maybe I had these in the wrong order. I wanted 3440 to be first. You can drag it and drop it, and now 3440 is first. Really simple, nice, small addition. The next thing, audio plugins. Audio plugins are now exposed for manipulation and for expanding upon inside your project settings. So inside my project settings, if I go to platforms, windows, and I scroll down, before we only had the audio device. So let me show you that. 4.17, project settings, we'll find windows, and we'll scroll down and you'll find we only had the audio device. And this is a way of forcing the audio device. For the most part, you never messed with this. It was the default auto. 4.18 adds spatialization plugin, reverb plugin, and occlusion plugin. All of these have a default built-in setting, but we now have exposed for designers to create their own editor plugins for these options. Lastly, we have a global find inside the system for blueprints. Let me go ahead and close this down. Actually, let's open that back up. And let's find something. Here's our find results. If we right click on this, for example, find references, we can find every time the print string is used and I can go right to it. Before you had another option here called find in all blueprints. So if I clicked on it, for example, now we get a new window. This is a find in blueprints window. This window can actually be docked anywhere like any other window. It can be accessed normally through window, find a blueprints, and then find a blueprints one, two, three, and four. So you can actually have four different find a blueprints docked. Now the nice thing about this is it uses kind of like a fuzzy searching system. So for example, I could type in print string, just like this, and we're gonna get all instances of print string and even some other things like the word uh, buffer commands right here, because it's a tool tip in here with the word string in it. We get this down here, an input string. We get some extra options. If we want just what we want, we can put quotations around it. We'll get back all the nodes for print string inside all of our blueprints. Maybe we wanted, for example, to get back a string like this, but just the word string. Well, we can put a plus in front of it. And then I'll say only match exactly this, and you'll see our strings. Maybe, for example, we wanted all the strings. So, for example, select string, to string, and things like this. But, no, you know what? We don't want select string. We want all the other ones. Well, we can minus it. Minus, select. 
string. Assuming I spelled it right, which I did not. Select string. And now we'll get all the strings, but minus the select strings. And you can add and subtract and do stuff like that. One nifty thing about this, let's go ahead and do the print string again. Let's go into our blueprint and we'll put a little comment here. This is our comment. This is mine. We'll compile that out and save it. We'll go back to our search and we'll search print string again. And we find that node and you'll notice the comment shows up here. So node comments will show up inside of our search results. So it's nice. It's a really nice small feature added in 4.18 that I figured could use just a minute or two to explain how it works. And that's it. Those are just five small little changes in 4.18 that I didn't think were really worthy of their own videos, but were really nice changes that I thought everyone should know about.